Hello, welcome to Discover Dorico for January. Um, first off, sorry for the short um, short notice about uh, today's session. Um, there's a, a fair number of things happening and obviously NAM. Um, let's just check the audio is okay. Seems to be okay so far. So um, let me know if there's any issues on that front audio or video wise. Um, as always, there's a cog in the bottom right hand corner of the YouTube window. Uh, for, for settings and if you need it you can up the quality that, that you're looking at there as well. So um, so here we go. So today um, I'm going to look at uh, some, to start off with at least some drum notation and quite a lot of um, drum kit example type things. Um, I've talked to a number of people about this um, since 1.2 has come out and um, I'd love some more examples from people of hey I'd really like to be able to do this please um and maybe we can use one of those in the next session actually i'd be quite interested if anybody uh, wants any i suppose orchestral percussion type um uh, examples if you've got any and said i'd like to create this kind of thing in dorico please if you want to email that to me um which is uh, just discover dorico at steinberg.de then maybe we can look at that one in future but you might have seen on the bottom of the screen there there's uh, a drum example which I've been sent in. Uh, Peter Ruse has sent uh, a, a couple of examples in. I also know the um, the one of the Facebook groups, Music Engraving Tips, has been talking about uh, a lot of options. Um, I suppose I should say at the beginning, you know, we try and enable as many options as possible for how you want drum kits to display. However, if you know a famous drummer and he prefers it to be notated a different way then you know i'll show you how we can change to to match what they would like their requirements um dorico doesn't by default do what's known as hands up uh, feet down but you can easily change it if that's the way you want to work um and i'd probably say whoever is paying you money for the project um whether that's the drummer or whether you're good friends with the drummer and you can ask him what he'd like or if it's a publisher ask them actually you know what their style is what they'd like where they'd like the drum kit to be notated because there isn't really a standard um uh so here we go here's some options and how you can change things so if you want to follow along um then of course i'm starting from a blank project um and you you can follow along with this um if you need a comfort break at any point or you want to kind of re refresh then that, that's no problem just press pause so uh let's start with a new solo player Oh, I'll just turn on my um, keystroke so you can see any shortcuts I do as well. So I did Shift P for a new solo player. I'm going to start with a drum set basic. I could start with the full one, um, but for the kind of examples I'm doing at the moment, the basic one should be fine. Uh, so press uh, Enter. Um, uh, hello to some of the people who are saying hello in the comments as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, start copying this example that we've got down here at the bottom. Um, so I'm going to jump into right mode. I'll put this one into 4-4. Four, four. It doesn't actually say it is, but it also says it's bar 9, so uh, who knows on that front. Um, and you'll notice, uh, of course, with drum notation, you've got uh, a, a little carrot line here. Um, and you can choose from all of the various instruments that you've got. You can enter um, a ride symbol or anything that way. And one of the ways you can do it is just by pressing Y. So um, if I enter a triplet at this point, so I want to select uh, 5 for quaver, uh, enter a triplet. I, because I'm on the right symbol, I can just press Y if I want to and, uh, and enter a note that way. However, if I was to carry on doing this, uh, when I then move to the snare drum and enter Y again for the snare drum, he's in the, the he's in stems down uh, by default in Dorico. Uh, and this example that we've got, he doesn't want to be, he wants to be stems up. So a few kind of um, uh, uh, how to set things up and, uh, and what else to do. Um, to, f to start off with, if we go into setup mode and edit our drum set, the first thing I need to do is choose the snare drum and simply switch the stems around on the snare drum. Uh, so he's now also going to be stems up. So now if I jump back into right mode, when I do the same thing, so I, I could uh, do the same, but actually what I'm going to do is um, I'll use, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to use MIDI keyboard for this bit, I think. So I'm going to jump into the preferences section um, and you've got a couple of options here. One is the use percussion map and one is use staff position. Um, so the difference being use staff position, excuse me, where we take this space at the top here as, as E, as if it's a treble clef. 
um, you can see we've got treble clef selected over here. Um, or there's a bass clef option if you prefer bass clef. Um, but uh, you can also, so that's the use staff position if you want to choose one of those two, but I'm going to use percussion map. So use percussion map, as it says down here, um, that will use the MIDI keyboard in kind of what's called general MIDI mode. So C, two octaves below middle C is your bass drum and uh, your snare drum is either D or E above that and hi-hat uh, closed is F sharp and uh, open is B flat and uh, those kind of things. Um, so I'll uh, so that that was fine. I'll, I'll uh, leave that. I'm going to use the MIDI keyboard rendering this. So now the first uh, thing, only thing I'd say about this at the moment is with tuplets, you're going to need to be effectively in the right voice on the right instrument when you start, because otherwise you're going to have um, uh, you, you're going to be in the wrong voice and uh, and end up with the the, the tuplets created wrong. Um, apparently, according to the comments, I said five for triplet. Sorry about that. So. There's a, a colon, um, so we can do the triplets. So I'm going to select Quaver and start the triplets. And then I'm just going to play on the MIDI keyboard the note that I need to play the right symbol. And then I'm going to press the space bar and then the snare drum. So we can carry on doing this. And this is then uh, uh, copying what we've got below down here. Then um, I can go back to the beginning of this bit. So actually, I don't need the, the triplets anymore. So uh, I'm going to go down to the hi hat, or somewhere down at the bottom of the staff, because then I know it's going to effectively be using the right voice. I'm just going to select six, press the space bar, and then I can press. Uh, in my case, it's A flat because that's what I'm using, or G sharp. Um, uh, that's what the hi hat pedal is. Um, so now, uh, actually, for this one, I'm just going to cheat and press R and repeat it. So then I've gen done that first uh, that first section. So here is the this first bar, a uh, couple of bars of drum music. And I um, I think this is uh, uh, an independence uh, figures option and there were a few other variants on it, but there's one down here, which I thought we'd do. So uh, if we carry on with this one, so let's just say we want to maybe put in a double bar line, add a couple of bars. Um, if you really want to, we'll put in a system break and start on the next line. I also, I've, I've done a little shortcut for myself for um, hiding system breaks and hiding all the signposts will turn those off. Um, so now if I want to do the next next one down, so I'm going to do the same kind of thing, I'm going to, turn, uh, go into tuplets um, and uh, then just play these ones in. Uh, so we've got the ride cymbal, I've got snare and I've got bass drum. Um, now you notice I've got the same problem, the bass drum needs to be the stems the other way up. So back to setup mode, let's just switch into this one. So the kick drum, he needs to be stems up as well for this particular example. Uh, I'm not saying this is right or this is how you want to do it, but I'm saying if you were given this example and this is what you were having to create, um, then this is how you do it. And I can just play these instruments. I'm not uh, having to choose note heads or anything. Dorothy is doing that bit for me. So I can play all of those in. And then if I want to put the um, hi-hat pedals in, then from here, again, I'll just move the cursor down a bit. Uh, it doesn't actually matter exactly where, but might as well be on the pedal hi-hat. Uh, and then I can do the same then to those. Now I've got uh, that entered as well. There we go. So th there's the first example. Um, and I was asked, uh, I was just sent a file and somebody said, can you show me you know, how you would create this kind of thing? So if you've got a similar example, let me know. Moving on, I've, I do have a couple of others. So from some of the conversations that then happened around that as to kind of how to notate drum notation, and this was a case of A or B, which one would you use, which one would you prefer, and uh, that kind of thing. So let's do, let's do this example. So I'm going to go back to setup mode. I'm going to create a new flow. Um, actually, for this one, because the um, bass and snare are the other way around, uh, I'm just going to use a different drum kit as well. So I'm going to add a new basic drum set. And in flow two, I'm going to turn off the first one. I'm just going to use drum set two. There we go. So I've still got this one over here, but I've got drum set two over uh, on here on flow two. So this one is also in four four. Um, one of the comments, Peter, who sent me the file, said that was fast. Um, sorry. Uh, hopefully, I have not gone too fast that you can follow it and work out what it is I did in that case, but. Um, uh, here's another one anyway. So this one's in 4-4. Four, four. Um, 
again, it's relatively standard notation. So let's leave the caret line where it is at this point because we're not having to, to change too much on this one. Um, so I'm just going to press the ride symbol, which in my case uh, happens to be an F just below middle C. Um, and then we can enter the rhythm for the ride symbol. I'm just doing this first bar down here. Uh, and then I'm going to go back to the beginning. You can see the shortcut I used even for that. And then I'm going to press five for quaver, eighth note as it will be for the rest of my week. Uh, and then I can enter the bass drum and I can enter the pedal hi-hat like this. And then press the space bar just to move on. There we go. So there's that first uh, that first bar example. Um, and there's a drummer falling order. Um, so the uh, well, one thing I would say that this little thing up here with the the swing, the um, T quavers is is played as a, a triplet feel. Um, I will admit at the moment we don't really have a way of doing that one easily in Dorico. So um, I have a little swing triplet feel um, file that I've made. Uh, which exists on my computer, and I just copy and paste it. So here's this little thing that I've made. Now these use the smoothful things. If I double click on this, you can see this is a text item with uh, the, the the right smoothful notes in it from uh, from Brazura and the bracket over the top. So I would probably just copy and paste that out of another file uh, if I needed one of those, just for simplicity. Um, so I, I will admit at that point, you know, it, it, the the swing feel isn't necessarily going to work. However. If we uh, just move on on this one to the next bar over here, um, so bar two, and if we're being particular, so, so uh, for this bar here, if we wanted to create that, now we could we could do that. Um, what you could optionally also do is in notation options, um, if you go to the percussion section, what they actually have here is it's all in the, a single voice. And there's an option here for using voicing defined in the kit editor, i.e. we've got a couple of voices here normally, or a single voice. So if I select single voice and press apply, then uh, then it makes almost that version anyway. But these notes, of course, they were uh, previously uh, quarter notes or crotchets. So you want this truncate to shortest duration option as well. So if I press apply on that one. So now you've got that option. So where you had an A-B test earlier between did you prefer A or B, actually in Dorico, it's a simple option in the notation options to switch between the two depending on whether you prefer A or B. Um, so hopefully in some ways it doesn't matter too much because if somebody decides that they prefer one or the other, um, then you can switch them over. Um, and switch them over between the two. Um, so, um, so I thought that was possibly just a, a useful example of kind of how, how to move some of these things, how to change some of these things around. Um, I've even in some cases seen um, you know ride symbols on different lines and you know, th those kind of things are easily moved as well. Um, now my third option here, uh, the third example. Uh, is this one here. So let's go back to setup mode, create a new flow. Just put one drum kit in it. There we go. So here is flow three, for example, three. So this one's in 12.8. So we'll put this one in 12.8. Um, now, another option, and I might have showed this before, I can't remember. So um, uh, apologies if I have. In our layout options in Dorico, um, using the shortcuts, you can see it says uh, Command Shift L. Um, if you just jump down to your players category, then you can change how your drum kits are displayed. I've got two here because I've got two drum sets. I happen to be using drum set two. So if I change drum set two to be single line instruments, there we go. Oh, it's just it affected the other, other layouts as well, didn't it? Never mind. Um, so what you could do here is when I'm entering my kick drum, this is actually there's uh, the it's effectively uh, crotchet crotchet quaver, quaver, crotchet, crotchet, quaver, quaver. It's just not quite displayed that way. So I could enter it that way. So I could say um, crotchet, and then crotchet, crotchet, quaver, quaver, crotchet, crotchet, quaver, quaver. The other useful thing about this, uh, this mode is that if you now select that, and I can repeat it, which makes more sense when you then come to do the snare drum. So the snare drum is actually only on beats two and four. So if I select dotted crotchet and press the space bar and press the snare drum, I could also press Y, it doesn't matter. Um, in fact, at this point, you can press any MIDI note you like um, in this particular mode. 
Um, but it made sense to me to hear the, the snare drum, so that's the one I would normally press. So you could enter the, the rhythm this way if, if that's how your brain works, if that's you know um, how you're thinking about it. Um, and then when you go back to layout mo uh, the layout options, you can just switch it back to a five-line staff, and then it will display as a five-line staff, of course. Now, these are all now displaying a bit too long, so this is again where you can use your notation options and truncate to shortest duration. And now I've got the um, bass and snare as it is in this example down here. So now uh, for the hi-hats at the top, so again, I could use Y or anything else, but I'll use the MIDI keyboard. So I can press, uh, in my case, it's uh, F sharp because I'm using the GM set. And um, there we go. Um, also, uh, there, there is an option just to press B flat for open hi hat. And if anybody's thinking, hang on a minute, that doesn't work, um, there, there might be a, an update coming out with uh, that will make that work for you. Um, more on that in a bit. Um, so there we go. So there's the hi hats. Um, and that was just using uh, F sharp and B flat on my MIDI keyboard to, to enter these notes or the um, open hi hat as appropriate. Now, down here is uh, an interesting case. So just at the bottom down here, because normally the snare is stems down, but actually here we've got stems up. Um, and I, uh, again, I've sent this one and thought, hmm, that's a, yeah, in, a more interesting one to show. So this snare drum here um, actually doesn't want to be there at all. Uh, in fact, that, according to the example down here, we've got, uh, they're not tidy, then we've got bass drum at that point. But we do need a snare stems up, and normally we've got snare stems down. So here's one option for this. If you go into play mode and play and percussion maps, in percussion maps, um, and it automatically selects the general MIDI one at the top up here, this defines um, uh, what's going to happen with all, with all of these drum notes. And with the GM map, so you can see all of the, the GM notes. So for example, my bass drum, note, MIDI note 36, happens to be two octaves below middle C. So it's a good reference point, that one there. Now, if I move up from there, then D is uh, acoustic snare, and uh, E here, note 40, is electric snare. Um, so if I use, I could use one of those maybe as, as my other snare option. So I'm going to leave D as my uh, normal snare drum, and my snare here, I'm going to change. So if I uh, select this one, and it, with the instrument it's using, I'm going to choose a marching snare drum one line. And press apply and OK. And why have I done that? I've done that so that I've got two snares that I can activate with uh, two different notes uh, on the MIDI keyboard, but I want them to display in the same place, but with note heads the other way up. Sorry, stems the other way up. So now I'm going to edit my drum set, edit the percussion kit. And here I've got my normal snare drum. My normal snare drum is stems down. That's fine. I'm going to press this plus button down here. Uh, I'm going to choose, I'm just going to type snare, and choose the marching snare drum one line. Add that one. So I've added it to my kit here, and it appears in this middle line. I'm now going to drag this up here, so I've got two snare drums on the same, uh, on the same space. If you're thinking in a treble clef, it's on, it, it's C. Um, so now, over here, where I want my snare drum, if I was to press D on the MIDI keyboard, then I get stems down. And if I press E, I get stemmed up. So I've now got two that, that I can use. So I'm just going to undo those. So uh, now for the, the, the notes that I want to copy this example at the bottom of my screen, um, I can put in this uh, the little slash note first. I can turn that off and then put in the actual note. And then the next one I want is a tom. So I'll press the, the tom note. Oh, and of, yes, of course, the tom is normally also in the, the same, but I want the toms to be stems up in this example. So I'll just jump back here. It feels like a lot of jumping into setup mode, maybe, but it's something you only have to do once. So for the note that already exists, there you go. It now, uh, it's now that way around. So, uh, so now with this drum part, and apparently this one wants to be a bit quicker. So I press Shift T, and I'll just do six dot for the uh, dotted crotchet, dotted quarter note is one twenty. There we go. There you go. So that was the uh, the next example. Uh, let me just check. There's a couple of comments. Let me see.
just uh, quickly on the comments, um, the can I show the drum editor in this session? Ah, oh, actually, I wasn't going to show it in this session, but if you'd like one on the drum editor, yes, maybe we can do that um, in the future. I think we might run out of time because I've got a bunch of other things to show today. Um, but yes, uh, what we're talking about here is in play mode for my drum set. We we also have a drum editor here, and you can enter the notes in the drum editor this way. And there's a little um, drumstick tool on the left here, and you can enter notes in the, the drum kit that way as well. I wasn't probably going to get to that bit today, unfortunately. Um, uh, also, Peter's asked, do you need to use another voice for the hi-hat? No, I've not used... I've not switched voices or anything at this point. So uh, just to, to clarify, if I um, just add a couple of bars here. So when I press notes, uh, and I'm using the, the MIDI keyboard, but I don't need to. So if I just press the up and down arrows, you can see the shortcuts I'm using. So if I want a hi-hat, I can just press Y, and that will enter a, a, a hi-hat note. I'm just going to change the shorter note value. And if I move down, there's, the, there's a ride cymbal and a tom. You can see the voices switch automatically because it knows which instruments are supposed to be in which voice, and therefore it's applying those automatically. So, um, and you can choose whether they're stems up or stems down. But I, and I haven't had to change anything to do with note heads or anything else. This is the, the the default note heads. I've changed some of the stem directions in some cases in some of the examples I've done, um, but I've not actually specifically saying anything about voices at that point. I, I don't need to. Um, the next example I've got is this one. Uh, and this one's also got some ghost notes in it. So let's do another flow. Uh, flow four, let's just have one drum kit in it. And here's flow four. Okay, so we're gonna do this example down here. Um, now this one is all in one voice again um, for this one. Now I'm not saying whether this is correct or not, I'm just saying I'm gonna copy the, the option. So I'm gonna switch at the beginning to use single voice. And that was in the notation options. Um, this one also is in 12.8, although for some reason I didn't put it on the beginning. Um, and let's put the uh, metronome marking in at the beginning as well. There we go. Um, so now with this one, um, if I'm using, I'm going to use the MIDI keyboard again just for speed, I guess. So I choose um, Quaver and I can play the notes that I need on the MIDI keyboard. So let's do um, maybe hi hat and snare a bit almost at the same time. You can't enter two notes at the same time. So there was an example I've just passed where I needed snare and hi-hat at the same time. I'll have to go back and put one of those in. Oh, wrong note value, wasn't it? Um, multiple ways to change it. You could use you know, insert mode or I'm, I'm just gonna press undo. There we go. So there's the first bit. And then if we go back, we can enter some of the other notes. So all I'm doing is I've pressed command or control if you're on uh, PC left to go back a bar. And then I've done it again to go back another bar. So I'm back at the beginning. Um, and now I'm just going to change the note value to quaver again. I'm going to press the bass drum. So it's going to put that in automatically. Then you can use either the space bar or you can use the arrow keys along the rhythm grid to get to where you need to be. I, think I need a snare drum in there. That's the one I was missing. Uh, in there, uh, one in there, and then here we want to snare drum notes. There we go. So we've got uh, this example here. Um, so you do want an accent on there and an accent on there. And there. If anybody knows what the tune is, don't tell anybody. And let's do. So I'm now selecting these with Control or Command because these are the ones that are need to be ghost notes. And I'm going to open the Properties panel. And I'm just going to toggle this one here, which is ghost note. So now they're ghost notes. And the ghost notes will, in soon, and in this version, um, will uh, play back with a, a slightly lesser dynamic, uh, more like a ghost note will as well. So in this example here, there we go. Um, and to prove it's not a fluke, let's see if we can do uh, another quick bit. So. Um, Bars really want them to be on that particular line. There we go. There we go. Put system break in and engrave mode. So um, now we've got what do we have? Um, 
then you can go back and put some other notes in. So let's do that one. Obviously, this is possibly slightly different copying something than if you were uh, composing something. Maybe you'd use the uh, single instrument um, option more if you're actually composing the piece as opposed to copying an existing piece. Um, select some of these so that they, there we go, like that. In the properties panel, turn on the ghost notes. Oops, yeah, ghost note options there. And how are we doing? Oh, yes, on the accents. So we'll do that and put some accents like that maybe. So let's see what this one sounds like. Okay, so oh, so there you go. So there's uh, a, a, another option and that's all in, in one voice. Now, as I said, I'm not saying that the Dorico way is the correct way of where all of the notes are displayed or which way the stems are but you now know that you can switch that quite easily in the notation options. You can switch between multiple voices uh, or not. So there you go, there's a, um, without tidying anything else up, I'd probably make some of these a bit longer if I was doing that. But in the uh, the single voice option, the way I've entered it, then uh, you've got that option as well. So you can switch between them, you can switch the stems d direction around, uh, and we also created uh, an extra snare. So we have one, one in each direction. So you've got a, uh, quite a lot of flexibility there. You can also change the note head types. So if you want to create other instruments and add those into your drum kit with different note head types in different positions on the staff. So as I said at the beginning, if you've got an example and you say, if you want to email it to me, discover Dorico at steinberg.de. Maybe it's an orchestral example. Um, there's a question about using different types of mallets and that kind of thing. Um, then, you know, if you want to send me, if you've already got maybe a PDF or you found an example of something, you say, can you show me how you'd enter this in Dorico, please? Maybe we can do that in, in one of the next uh, sessions. Um, now, I don't know how much we've said, but there, uh, with when 1.2 uh, came out, there are a couple of bugs that some of the developers would quite like to fix. So there will be um, a little update to Dorico coming out in the near future. I think most of the times when I've said that, it's probably happened between this session and the next one, which would be sometime you know, near the end of February. So at some point in the next few weeks, probably depending on you know. Um, which way the wind's blowing, uh, you, there will be a little Dorico update and it will, will fix a couple of things that people wanted, including, as we mentioned before, um, the hi-hats. So when I've entered some of these hi-hat uh, options here, um, you can now just enter open hi-hats just by pressing um, B flat on the MIDI keyboard, um, if you're using the, the uh, GM mode option. Um, and then you, it, that might be a quicker way of entering some things like that, which is quite nice. However, there's a couple of other things that uh, people might like, because um, as you, you may know from our developers, if we can sneak a couple of other things in, then they will often try. So here's a piece I've used a lot before, but that doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I just wanna show you a couple of other options in it, and this seems like a suitable option. So if I select the uh, oboe part up here, and then maybe let's say the viola is down here using command or control. So I've just got those two selected. You can ignore the fact that this dynamic is also blue. It's because it's it's linked to the other one, that, that's fine. But I've just selected the oboe part and the, uh, the viola part. Now, if I press P, when this one plays back, you only get those two instruments. So I know it's a nice little option that, that some people have asked for, and uh, and our team have added that one. So in a little update soon, you'll you'll be able to do that too. However, uh, as you'd expect, so that was just pressing P. When you just select one note and press P, you will get all of the instruments, of course, as you'd expect. So what happens if you just want to solo one of them? Well, there's also a little shortcut, which is Alt S, just to solo one instrument. Uh, and you can see that happening in the mixer. So I've pressed Alt S, and now I've got a little solo here in the mixer. Uh, and now if I take my hand off the mouse, there's also a deactivate all solos. So if you want to turn those off, you can press Alt Shift S and turn all the solos off. So just when you're composing without using the mixer, you've now got a bit more control over, uh, over those kind of things. And if you've also done things like mute things in the mixer, so if I've muted a couple of instruments, there's also a shortcut to, to turn all the mutes off as well, uh, if you don't want to hear everything. So if you're just working on a, a, little, um, a little piece, or a big piece, and you just want to hear some of the instruments, just uh, control clicking those instruments and pressing P to play from, from that point 
in the project, it will only play you those instruments, which I know is an option that uh, has, has been requested of me recently as well. Uh, a couple of other things um, in engraving options, um, and this one's come up occasionally on Facebook, the system dividers. So they will be available very shortly. So if you need system dividers be between your staves. Um, also in the bar lines option, if you scroll all the way down, all the way down, all the way down, nearly to the bottom, there's a little show wings option. So you, if you want um, wings uh, on your repeat bar lines, then you can. Um, yes, that was Schubert's Unfinished Symphony, and it is still unfinished. Well, my version is anyway. Um, the, uh, there's also an option in notation options. Uh, there's, there's, there's all sorts of things then I did, but I'm just highlighting a few. Um, when you want your, uh, join, your staves to join at the end, uh, normally they join at the beginning, but sometimes you want them to join at the end as well, depending on the, the type of music. So there's a couple of options in there for that. If you want to add things like um, tokens, so let's say that uh, Schubert's eighth movement one, um, if I add in a little, uh, you know, we, we normally have these for things like flow titles and, and that kind of thing. Uh, you can now do things like date and say, I'll have date day and turn it to Tuesday because it's Tuesday today. Um, so there's little uh, date tokens and things like that, which you, might be useful in some cases. Um, when you're entering things like, um, let's find somewhere that's got some notes. Here we go. Um, then you might do things like use the Shift T popover for uh, tempos. And when you type into here, uh, it's now going to suggest things. So if you start typing, it will suggest a few things. Uh, and you can start. Do I want Allegretto or Allegrissimo? But anyway, you can see the options in here, and it, uh, and then pick them. It's a little popover suggestions option. Um, similarly, with the Shift P popover, um, if I type things like um, up, then I get um, up bows and uh, other options in there. If I type mute, then I'll get some of the mute options in there. So now just suggesting various things that, that you can use. The Shift B popover for dynamics, uh, you'll be able to do things like um, N, oops, I don't need a capital N. Um, N and the uh, and, and hairpins, and it will put the little uh, niente in for you that way. Or you can do it the other way and say, actually, just put an O at the end, please, and uh, it will do it. Oh, you can't see that. Deselect it, and there you go. So you can see now we've put a little O at the end there. So some of those popovers just showing you little um, suggestions and, and that kind of things. Um, can you correct or change a tempo marking is one of the questions which come up. You can, um, but you need to do it in the properties panel. So if you choose, put it in a tempo like this, when it's selected, if you use the properties panel, you've got all sorts of options down here as to uh, changing the text. You can change the speed in here. So if you don't want it to be quite 112, if you want them to be parenthesized or you want to say it's an approximate or anything else, you can have a range. There's all sorts of options that you can put in here. Maybe you don't want the metronome mark to be shown at all um, and you don't need the brackets for the text. You know, There's all sorts of options as well. Uh, so uh, that one's been in there a while. Um, a couple of other things, when you uh, right click or otherwise use your note head options, they're now categorized. Um, so when you're looking for a particular type of note head, you don't have such a big list, which will be quite handy. Um, so there's, there's, there'll be all sorts of little things that, that, that may apply to some people and not others. It's not a big update that's coming out. As I said, it's, it's mainly there's, there's a few things that uh, the guys wanted to fix, but they've, they've snuck a few things in at the same time. Um, so hopefully that will be useful to some people. Um, now, there are a few things that uh, I know have been coming up recently in conversation, things like expression maps and various other things. So um, I, I also know with expression maps, um, we, uh, we've we kind of got time today, haven't we? Let's just have a quick check. Yeah, let's have a quick look. So, um, so for things like expression maps, if you go into play mode, if you want to create an expression map from the very beginning, you go to play in expression maps. Let's say, for example, I want to make a, well, actually one I've done recently was a quick, little quick general MIDI one. Um, and it's more likely you'll be using one for something like VSL or uh, something like that. But here's a quick example. So you press the plus button right down the bottom down here. These are all the expression maps that are already loaded with the program. So I'm gonna make a new one. So I click the plus button uh, and I can now edit this. So I'm gonna say this is a general MIDI piano, for example. Uh, and then the creator is me, and I can add in a technique. Now, what this little thing is going to do, 
natural in, in here is that the normal natural um we, you know without doing anything else uh for a general midi piano is going to send a program change of one because that's where my piano is so for example um as a, this, this is a, a, a very quick example um if you were to add a piano into this piece because i don't think it has one already add a piano yeah typing quicker than i can add anything else Uh, so I've got a, a piano added to this piece now. In play mode, maybe I want my piano to play out via a MIDI keyboard behind me. So with all of these instruments I've got down here, I'm going to send the piano, instead of it to Halion, I'm going to send it to a MIDI instrument. So I'm going to add a MIDI port. I'm going to tell that MIDI port on, the, on channel one to use my new general MIDI piano expression map. And I'm going to tell my piano to use that MIDI port. So I'm going to select Steinberg interface, and then I'm going to select channel one. So now this piano is now going to play out through this MIDI port, and it's going to play out using this expression map that I've created. So by default, it means that my uh, keyboard behind me will now do send a MIDI be sent a MIDI patch change from Dorico to to change that. That's the kind of thing that I, I've done. A, cheated really with with expression maps what's a more common case is that you'll be using something like the vienna sonic symphonic library or an east west library or something like that and you would come into to here now before you create a new expression map go and have a search on the internet in our forums in the forums for uh, the sample library um on facebook if there's a suitable group ask on our group in fact and on the dorica one as well is there a sample uh, is there an expression map that already exists for the sample library you're using because if there is, you can just use this import library and import somebody else's. If there's a Cubase expression map, import that one because it's a good place to start. If you can't find one anywhere and nobody else is making one or, uh, already or have mentioned it on the forum, then you might want to come in and add a new uh, option yourself. And instead of where I did for the piano, add natural, you'll be adding things like um, maybe you for spiccato, you'll you can add a spiccato as a technique for your strings, for example, and you can then add in uh, a controller change or a note event, depending on uh, what the library says. And that's where you'd need to probably read the li library's manual to find out, you know, are they using note events? Are they using controller changes to send their, their uh, changes um, for the, the different patches? So, for example, here for the piccolo, he has a staccato option, which is a key switch, uh, which is number 22. So uh, that's we been got out of the manual for this particular one. And I've done, as I said before, I've done one for GPO5, which you can use, and that's on our Facebook group as well. Um, but you, you then have to read the manual. If you can import somebody else's library or an expression map, Cubase expression map, then that's going to give you a good idea as to are they using key switches or, or anything else. So this is just a very quick kind of... If you were to start from the beginning, create your own expression maps, how you do it. But I know there will be a video um, for Anthony as well who, that, that will cover this kind of thing. And if this is the kind of thing that, that you want to discuss in more detail, then, then let me know and maybe we'll do another session on that at another time. Um, so that's almost it from me for, for today. Um, it was uh, mostly drums because that's what I've been asked about. So what would you like to discuss in the next Discover, Discover Dorico session? Email me on discoverdorico at steinberg.de. Send me some examples of, you know, I'm working on a symphony, a quartet, something, uh, this type of notation, uh, that type of notation. And let's, let's you know, create some of those examples and, and show you how you might do some of those in Dorico. Um, also, you can come and say hello to various people over the next uh, few days and weeks. Uh, so actually, even tonight, if you happen to be in LA already, um, at the American Film Institute, uh, sorry, American Film Institute in LA, in association with the Society of Composers and Lyricists, you can go and see Daniel. And he'll be doing a Dorico session there uh, this evening. Um, this evening being Tuesday the 23rd. Uh, tomorrow, Wednesday the 24th of January, um, there's a Steinberg Day, including Dorico, at the, uh, I presume it's uh, Piacenza in Italy, um, excuse my Italian, uh, and Franco will be doing that session. So you can go and uh, meet him and ask, ask questions about anything Steinberg, but ask him particular Dorico questions would be nice. Um, on Thursday, the 25th of January uh, onwards, that's when NAM starts. So if you're in LA around then, then you can come and find Daniel or myself 
Uh, I will actually be there uh, as well. Daniel will be, I think he will be around. You'll find me more often on the Yamaha stand. The Yamaha stand is actually in the Marriott building. So if you need to, just go and find the Marriott Hotel um, and I'll be in there because that's where all of the Yamaha stand is. And of course, Steinberg being a part of Yamaha, that's where you'll find us. Uh, on Friday the 26th, which is uh, still uh, this week at time of speaking, uh, in Vigo in Spain, there's a Dorico session with Carlos, uh, so you can go and see that one. And Future, kind of looking ahead, uh, also in February, there's a Music and Drama Expo at Olympia in London uh, on the 22nd and 23rd of February, uh, and you can come and see us at that one as well, and we'll be running some Dorico sessions there. Um, so I'm just going to check some of the comments to see if there's anything we've missed. Bear with me a second. I uh, don't th know if Daniel's presentation will be recorded, the one tonight. Um, I'll check. It, I think it was last year, but I don't know if it is this year. Um, it, it, unfortunately, we're not running that session. We're just guests at it, so I'm not sure on that yet. And let's have a look. Uh, somebody will be at the event tonight. And Nam, okay, I will meet uh, composer JK. Um, come and say hello um, and maybe tell me your real name. And I'll prove that I don't just have a Lego head like I do on Facebook. I'm just checking some of the other comments. Bear with me a second. There's a question about the uh, Surface, for example, with a pen and tablet. Yes, you can use Dorico on a on a Surface. Um, there's there's one in our office, not where I'm currently, but there's one in our office in London. Um, if you are going to use a Surface, there's a couple of things I'd use. For example. In the preferences, uh, there's some mouse options for mouse input as to what happens um, when you're, for example, here, allowing multiple items to be created with a mouse and whether you're loading the cursor with the item. And that kind of thing is quite useful when you're using a stylus. And also, you'll probably have this right-hand panel open a bit more often and be selecting things from this panel as opposed to using some of the popovers and, and shortcuts and things. Uh, but it might depend how you use your, your surface. Uh, so you can do it that way. We don't have a handwriting recognition option in Dorico um, yet. I mean, you can use things like StaffPad, and StaffPad also has a music XML export. So you can handwrite the music into StaffPad, and then you can use music XML to export it into Dorico to, for the, the finished article. Uh, I'll just check some of the other comments. I don't think I've missed anything too much. I will be on some of the, the, the comments asking some of these questions. So, um, let me, da, 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 da. yes, so I, I'll answer some of the questions on the, the, the forum. So thank you for watching. I, I don't have anything um, uh, else to show you this month. Come and see us at one of the events, um, especially if you can come and see me. Um, and I'll see you uh, next week, next week probably in, in LA, but I'll see you next month for the next Discover Dorico session. Thank you for watching.